Hey you guys, it's Kaylee. I'm back with another What Sold From Last Week video. If you're new to this channel, my name is Kaylee. I'm an online reseller. I go to thrift stores, I pick items up for cheap, and I flip them online on sites like eBay and Poshmark. If you're interested in learning how to do that for yourself, then subscribe to my channel down below and hit that notification bell. It'll notify you every time I make new videos. Every week I like to come on and share what's sold on those two sites that I talked about, eBay and Poshmark. I find that by sharing that, it's helpful to people who want to know what they can also look for at their thrift stores. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Sales have been really good for me. I have, I would say, maintained like between five and 6,000, which is exactly where I wanna be at. And all of the work I'm putting in is starting to pay off, which I'm really happy with. Poshmark is surprisingly becoming a really solid key platform for me. eBay used to be like my bay and making the most sales, but lately Poshmark's actually been really kicking into gear. And I won't say that I think it'll surpass eBay, but it is getting really close to being neck and neck. So I'm excited to share those sales with you today. Let's jump into it now. So everything that you see here on this screen on these reports happened between October 16th through the 22nd. That is last Sunday, or I guess two Sundays ago through a Saturday. That's how I calculate calculate my weeks because that's how these platforms calculate their weeks and it just makes pulling all the information super easy. So the 16th through the 22nd, the week that just happened. In total, I sold 182 items on two different platforms. My gross sales were $5,695.18. My average sale price was $31.29. My estimated cost of goods based on the average buy cost was $728. And then my estimated net, which is my gross sales, less cost of goods, fees, and shipping costs was $3,457.28. On eBay, I sold 89 items. And on Poshmark, I sold 93, which is crazy. More on Poshmark than on eBay. That doesn't hardly ever happened. I'm not sure that it has ever happened, maybe once or twice, but you can see that sales have really started to pick up on Poshmark. And part of that is because I'm doing closet clear out and fleshing out some older items, which has been super beneficial to my business. So on eBay, I sold 89 for a gross sales total of almost $3,300. And on Poshmark, a gross sales total with 93 items of almost $2,400. So big difference on sales. You can see the reason for that is my average sale price on eBay was a little over $37, which is pretty good. That's getting back up to where I want it to be. And on Poshmark, it was almost $26 for an average sale price. So huge difference there. Um, well, let's see, that's like $12 difference. And that is because once again, I'm fleshing out items on Poshmark, but when I take bad items, you know, the older stuff that didn't sell for whatever reason, when I take those items out of both platforms, whenever one sells on one, I take it off the other platform. So when I take it off of both, it, taking those bad items out of my store and my closet really help the algorithm to understand that I do have good items instead of stale items just sitting in my store. So when I flush out one on one platform, it does help the other platform as well. Let's dive into some of these sales. I do have a lot, so I'm going to try to go pretty quickly and we're going to start with eBay. So this first one is a J. Crew women's cardigan. Um, I don't pick up a lot of J. Crew, but I do pick up more special pieces. You can see this one is missing the size tag, but we were able to figure out um, which one it was. There was also a little bit of stitching coming loose, which we did make sure to note in two different places and also in the pictures. You can see this is a really interesting like Nordic Fair Isle cardigan. And the print is what drew me to it. Um, this is a very like classic, I would almost even call this Southwestern print sweater. It just looked very on trend. I only caught the corner of the shoulder and decided to look at it. This ended up being a very, very rare piece in J. Crew. So if you see anything like this, I would definitely give it a look over. This actually sold pretty quickly. I only paid $4.89 for it. I listed, I think for like $125 or best offer um, because there were other ones in this exact same style on 
eBay, I decided that in order to get mine to sell over other people, I was going to accept best offer and just see what I could get. Again, I only paid $4.89, just under five bucks for it. So I think I listed this for like $1.25 or best offer. Someone quickly sent me an offer for $90 and I said, I will take that. Next up is a pretty interesting sale. I really love the sale. We got this at the bins. Nikki found this and she was going back and forth on whether to get it or not. She saw this tag, Sophie's Wild Woolens, which if you see any very like plain, simple tag like this with just like black and white text lettering, that's usually a good indicator that it's probably a higher end brand. And then in addition to that, anything like woolen mills, anything like that or made in Ireland wool, I'm always looking up. That stuff tends to perform pretty well for me. So this was a lamb's wool poncho. It was handmade in England. All of that information was on the tags. And you can see it's just a very interesting like artsy art to wear poncho. And ponchos right now are doing really good as well um, because that Western Southwestern trend is coming back in. So I said, hey, it's at the bins. Let's take a chance. She couldn't find much information on it, but what she could find was that they were going for a decent amount, the ones that did sell. So we decided to risk it, and I'm so glad we did. We probably only paid a couple bucks because it was at the bins. It ended up selling on a best offer for $56.54. So great return on investment there. Highly recommend you keep your eye out for ponchos. Here is another poncho that sold. This one that we did not get at the Benz, we actually paid significantly up for this. I just got this like last week, I think. And we paid, you guys ready for this? $29.99. So $30 for this poncho. So when I did comps, all of these ponchos were listed and selling for about like $90 to $95. And it had an amazing sell through rate. I've never heard of this brand Tucker Nuck, but you should definitely keep your eye out for it. I think it might be like a website. I think it might be kind of like anthropology where there's anthropology, but then there's brands that fall under and you're going to see one of those here in a moment, but this is new to me. So Tucker Nuck, I would definitely keep your eye out for their ponchos. You should do a comp on them. Really great return on investment. And this one was new with tags. So I pretty, felt pretty confident for all of those reasons. Even though I'm paying a lot, I know I'm going to double my money like very quickly. So what I decided to do was I picked it up for $30. And like I said, everyone else's were listed and selling for 90 to 95. I thought it would be an even quicker flip if I just dropped $5. So that's what I did. I listed for $84.89. It sold almost immediately after getting listed for my full asking price. So that is 30 into $85 and a really quick flip. Next up is a pair of Converse. I do come across a lot of Converse. They're pretty decent sellers. However, I tend to only pick up the rare specialty ones. So if you see anything like crazy printed, character printed, special edition kind of looking, I've sold a lot of Converse, Vans, I think even Tom's different ones when they have, you know, special characters and stuff on them, they do really good. They're more rare and they have a following. I actually paid up for these ones as well. I paid $14.99. That's what Goodwill had these priced for. $14.99 for these Hello Kitty Converse. And if you do a comp on Hello Kitty Converse in the women's department, you are going to see a really high sell through rate. These ones were in pretty decent condition. As you can see, they did have somewhere on them. You kind of see we tried to get the this uh, price off the bottom and were unsuccessful, which is so funny because they still sold. That's how popular they are. So we listed for $64.89. Again, I paid about $15 for them. They sold within a month of listing. Really great sale, really great return on investment. Keep your eye out for Converse specialty items. This is one of my favorite brands to sell. I talk about it a lot, so I won't dwell on it here, but Eileen Fisher is a really amazing brand to sell. This had a lot going for it. It was a size 3X. It had some like ombre striping details at the bottom, and it was made out of yak and wool, which in Eileen Fisher, any kind of material other than like polyester and cotton, anything is going to up the value. So I paid $4.89 for this. We listed for $59.89. It sold within just a couple of weeks for our full asking price. Okay, this is the other 
tucker nuck item that I was talking about. It's so funny I came across them both in the same week. So this is Pomander Place, and when I looked this up, it was sold by Tucker Nuck. So again, I think it's kind of like Anthropology how they have their house line brand, but then they also encompass other brands. So definitely keep your eye out for Tucker Nuck pieces. Maybe even go on the website and learn some of those brands. Um, I do the same. It's been a while since I've sold them, but there's a website called Huckberry. They sell a lot of men's items, and every brand on there regardless of what I see for comps on eBay, I pick up any brand that's on that website and I study it. It just does really well for me and sells for a lot of money. So this is Pomander Place. And the only reason I looked at this, this was actually in the men's department. They put it in the men's shirt. It's a women's dress, mini dress. Um, the only reason I looked at it was because when I felt it, it felt very thick and high quality. You can kind of tell from the photos here. Not necessarily a desirable color, but when I did my comps, I found that this exact same one had sold uh, pretty quickly and the sell-through was looking good for this brand. I paid $5.99 for this. I listed for $49.89. It sold for my full asking price within just a couple of weeks. This is an interesting sale. This is J. Peterman, which let me see. I don't know. Apparently we do not have a brand label of this, but I promise you they are J. Peterman. It says it on the inside. Um, I picked these up. J. Peterman is a very high-end designer brand. Their stuff tends to sit on eBay, however. You gotta really have the right piece. These are a pair of what I think were vintage uh, J. Peterman boots because I wasn't sure. We did not put that in the listing, but I do believe that they were vintage. I just don't know how old. And they were a pair of like Victorian looking lace up boots. And we picked these up. Let's see here. We picked these up for $4.99. We listed for $64.89. And they sold for our full asking price within just about a week. Next up is a Ben's pickup. This was a very heavy jacket, so I definitely paid a little bit up for this, probably $5 if I had to guess. Um, G-Star Raw is a brand that can retail for a bunch, but typically resale value is pretty low unless you've got a special piece. I did think that this was a special piece. It was like a distressed looking jacket, men's size extra large. You can see there is a lot going on with it distressing and there were a couple of spots. Um, we made sure to list all of that. And what I did was I just priced high and accepted best offer. I think we originally priced it at $75, took about a month to sell and we accepted an offer of $50. Next up is a Bowden piece. I love picking up Bowden dresses. I pick up almost every Bowden dress, especially when they are like a midi maxi length. So this one is a maxi dress, size 10, new with tags, ton going for it, and all the information was there. We paid $5.99 for this dress. Um, I don't remember what we originally listed it for, but it ended up selling for $47.45. Here is another Bowdoin dress. I thought I'd show them both at the same time. Um, we sell a lot of them. Um, a lot of this brand in general, but their dresses are a pretty safe pickup especially in larger sizes. This one is a size 12. It's just a red sweater dress. Uh, we paid $4.99 for this, listed for $37.95. Um, it did take a little while to sell. I think that's because we listed it in the warmer season. Um, we listed this in May and it just now sold. So if that gives you any kind of an idea, but it was a sweater dress. So I think it just had to wait for the colder weather, but it ended up selling on um, full asking price for $37.95, which even though I had to wait, I am super happy with. This one is an Abercrombie & Fitch men's vest. This is called the Summit Rock, which that was the whole reason I looked at it was because I noticed it had a specific style name on the inside. Abercrombie & Fitch Summit Rock men's size large uh, down puffer vest. All of those reasons I decided to look it up and it had a pretty decent sell-through rate. I paid $5.99 for it. This is another one of those things that I picked up when it was a little bit warmer weather um, and it just now got to selling because we have just moved into some pretty cold weather. So I listed for $44.95. It did just sell for my full asking price. 
This was a very surprising sale to me. I took a chance on this. I got these at the bins. This is the brand Lucy. This is not a brand that I pick up very often. And the only reason I got these was because A, I was getting them at the bins. B, they were a size large. And C, they were new with tags. And I had all of the information there. So this is called the Lucy Everyday Pamp. I think when I did comps on this, it did not have 100% sell-through rate, but it had a decent sell-through rate. So I decided to risk it at the bins. Um, I listed these for $44.98, probably only paid a couple bucks for it. Um, it retailed for $79. So I did even over half of the retail value, which is not something I typically do. They ended up selling for full asking price. So this is a brand I'm reconsidering picking up. I'll probably exclusively only look at it in larger sizes and at the bins, but I was really surprised with that sale because uh, $45. I know it's new with tags, but $45 is quite a bit in my opinion for this brand and for how quickly it sold. So I'll be looking for this brand in the future. This next one is a pair of Spanx. I brought this up in like every video. We've just been selling a ton of Spanx. When fall hits, all of my Spanx fly out of the store. So I'm really happy with that. Um, if you've got Spanx, make sure that they are listed. And if they're not selling, you might want to go back and rework your listings because they are flying. So this is a pair of Spanx, women's size medium, green, like cargo looking pull-on pants. I paid $4.89. It sold for my full asking price of $39.97. And it took about three months to sell. This next one is a more desirable, in my opinion, uh, kind of item in Spanx. This is a faux leather legging. Now, the reason these sold for uh, less is because there was some issues, some flaws that you see here, but we still got them because they were a size large. I paid $4.89. These ones we listed for $39.99. Even with the flaws, I would have listed for much more had there not been flaws, but even with flaws, listed for about 40 bucks. They sold on an offer to watcher for $35.99. Great for a flawed item. This is one of those trust your gut items. This is J Crew. This one was new with tags. It was just a size two, but it was a linen dress and it had a really nice shape to it. It was all over smocked, as you can see, all the way down. And it was a knee length, um, maybe midi for some people dress. I just thought it was super on trend. It had, again, all those factors stacking for it. So I took a chance on it. I paid $4.89 for this and I listed for $39.98. It only took two months to sell and it sold for my full asking price. This one is a pretty... Um, good pickup that I'd recommend looking for. And really any brand are plus size, plain looking linen maxi dresses. That was a lot. All of those factors do matter though. This is a vintage J. Jill uh, size 1X yellow, which I think is a pretty good color for this type of item maxi dress. And again, it was made out of linen. We paid $4.89 for this. It sold for um, an offer to watcher of $35.90, and it took only about a month to sell. I do keep my eye out for a lot of these larger sizes, uh, vintage looking maxi dresses. Okay, we've got a couple Judy Blue items. I just like sharing this because this is a denim brand that is pretty new to me. And since I came across it and did some comps, I've been finding a lot of it and selling a lot of it. So I wanted to share that with you guys about how that's going. So this is a pair of Judy Blue uh, 14W skinny fit jeans. And these ones we picked up for $6.99, which is full price at my Goodwill. Um, we listed for $34.98. It ended up selling on an offer for $31.48, um, but it was a super quick flip. Here's another pair of Judy Blue. These ones are a size 13. They are the relaxed fit. We picked these ones up for $4.75, listed for $29.89, and they did sell for our full asking price of about $30. And these ones only took a month to sell. Okay, this was something I took a chance on. This was, as I say, one of those gut feeling ones. I found this for $2.99 at a VOA. And the like 
colorway of it, the structure of it just seemed really high quality and on trend. And as I said before, anything like plain looking tag with just regular lettering, I usually look it up. I had never heard of this before. This is called the Shirt by Rochelle, I think it's Barron's. When I did a comp on this, the sell through rate was not there for me, but I thought I had a bit more of a nicer print. So I took a chance on it at $2.99. I listed for $34.89. It sold within a month from my full asking price. So I am glad that I trusted my gut on that. Um, and that's something I'll do pretty often is if the comps aren't there, but I have a good feeling about it, I will just think in my mind, do I have factors that nobody else has that is going to up my value and up my sell through rate and get this item to sell quicker. And in this case it did. Next up is a North Face women's jacket. North Face has been so hit or miss for me. I try to pick up the more modern pieces. I did think that this one was a bit more modern. You can see it is in pretty good quality. Um, this is just a zip jacket. Definitely in the women's, you want to look for larger sizes. Men's too, but I think it's more important in the women's. This was called the Far Northern Hoodie in a size medium. I paid $5.99 for this. It ended up selling on an offer for $30.95, so not bad, but I did want to point this out because if you're sitting on North Face, you're probably going to have to drop the price. The market is just super flooded for most pieces. This is a good bread and butter pickup for us. This is L.L. Bean. This is a women's size medium petite, just flannel shirt jacket, and shirt jackets are really in, and L.L. Bean's a pretty solid brand for me, so I got it. We paid $4.89 for this. They counted it as a shirt listed for $29.89. It took about a month to sell for full asking price. Here's another Eileen Fisher pickup. I wanted to share this one because this one sold for a lot less than I normally sell Eileen Fisher for, but still a pretty decent flip. So we picked this up at the bins. This is an older label size extra large women's velvet pant. When I came across this at the bins, I did my comps on velvet pants because with Eileen Fisher, you know, every piece, in my opinion, is unique and it gets priced differently depending on what it is. So I do usually do a comp on it. Um, and the velvet pants were not doing good. Not good sell through rate, not good um, return on investment or anything. But I was like, I'm picking up at the bins. Eileen Fisher does good for me. I'm going to go ahead and get it. It ended up selling on a best offer for $23, which is not a bad flip, but I did want to point that out. I talk about picking up Eileen Fisher a lot, but not all of the pieces sell really well for me. This is Billy Reed, one of my favorite men's brands to find. They definitely have a high retail value. They definitely have a following. I will say that if you just have a plain t-shirt in this brand, not going to do as well. But this was a long sleeve shirt. It was a very thick material, which is how I came across it. Size extra large. Um, you can see we use the word staple in here. That's kind of what this brand does is very staple pieces. We paid $4.89 for this listed for $29.99. It sold within a couple of weeks for our full asking price. Okay, I talk about this particular style and this brand a lot. These are the Banana Republic Traveler jeans, and I pick up almost anything in this style. These ones had some issues, though. There were a couple of oil stains throughout them, and so normally we price these at a solid like $30 to $35. Because those had oil stains, we dropped them to $25 just to flush them out of the store. We only paid $3.99. I don't think when we got them we realized there was oil stains or there were oil stains it only happens when we get under that harsh lighting that we notice it but even with those stains they sold very quickly within a couple of months for our full asking price of $24.97 so I just wanted to show you the power of this particular style in Banana Republic that even with flaws it's selling for $25 so I would definitely keep your eye out for unflawed ones. This was a bins pickup another trust your gut one I probably should have listed this higher looking back, but this is just the brand Sienna Sky. I think it's a brand that's typically sold at like Marshall's, TJ Maxx. I only picked this up because I thought it was a very like cottage core midi dress and I was like, I'll just price it kind of low. I'm getting at the men's. I'll take a chance based on style. It was also a size large, which is why I think I should have priced a little higher. I listed this for $26.99. It sold almost immediately within about a week of listing for 
and offered a watcher of $24.29. And because it sold so quickly, I definitely think I could have gotten more for it, but I wanted to show this style um, at the bins, this is kind of a style you might want to look for, that micro print, you know, we've got pink and whites here, just a lot of details to help aid in that cottage core style. Something else I like getting at the bins are wraps and scarves. They tend to perform pretty well for me. This is actually a brand I do recommend you pick up. Typically when I pick up scarves, it's for style, not for brand, but this particular brand actually seems to do pretty well. It's called Epis or a piece, E-P-I-C-E. -E. Um, this is just a frayed rectangle scarf. I actually don't know what the material was. I think it was just like a cotton linen blend, so not even wool or anything like that. And you can see it's not a very long scarf, but the brand really brought it through. We probably paid less than a dollar for this. It sold for our full asking price within a couple of we weeks for $29.99. $30 for a pre owned scarf is really good, so I would definitely keep your eye out for that brand. This is a Talbot's piece. We paid $2.99 for this. We got it because it was 100% pure cashmere. It was also a size large, pretty plain black, but cashmere really pulls things through. Um, we listed for $27.89. It sold within a couple of weeks for our full asking price. These boots you might remember because I've actually sold these before and they got returned due to fit and they sold again. So these are Ms. Moves. I would definitely recommend picking up almost anything in this brand. These are high quality leather boots and they are meant most of their styles look the stress they're manufactured that way. Um, you can see we did include some wear and scuffing as well. So we picked these up for $3. I actually don't know exactly how much they sold for. We listed for a little over $40. I don't know exactly how much they sold for because they actually sold in a bundle, but I think they got about 20% off of their bundle. So that would be, let's see, that would be like roughly like around $35 for these. Um, some of these boots I've actually sold for like $50. So definitely want to keep your eye out for Ms. Moos. Here's another cashmere piece. We got this at the bins. Nordstrom's not typically a brand I pick up, but you know, it was the bins. It was 100% cashmere. Um, there was one small hole in the front, which we had to note. We listed for $24.99. It's still sold for our full asking price. These are a pair of aloe yoga leggings. We paid $4.39 for these and they ended up sitting, I think because of the smaller size. And I guess it just wasn't as desirable as um, a style as I thought, but they still ended up selling for an offer of $24.30. This brand in my opinion performs well for us. I do think it depends on the style, but I do don't think, I mean, most of my stuff sells for at least around 25 bucks and higher. Most of the alloy leggings though, I do get about 30 to 35 for, and so I continue to pick up this brand. This is a really good brand I've been picking up lately. It's Coldwater Creek. I try to stick to the larger sizes. This is on the verge of not being large enough, but it is a size extra large, and I thought the style would pull it through. This is a mustard yellow button up top. You can see it's got some interesting uh, details to it. Anything in this brand in larger size that looks bohemian flies for me. And so I've just been paying special attention to that. I definitely don't pick up every piece in Coldwater Creek though. Um, I paid $5.99 for this actually. $5.99 for a pre-owned t-shirt because I was that confident in it. I'm glad I did. I listed for $27.89. It sold very quickly on an offer to watcher for $25.10. Now we're moving over to some of the Poshmark pieces. These are a pair of Mavi jeans, or I guess Mavi Chino pants, but Mavi jeans is the brand. Um, we do like picking up Mavi. I will say it really does depend on the style, and they usually have the style on the inside. These are called the matte rela relaxed straight legs, so just make sure you do your comp on that specific style um, and even size sometimes, just to be sure. But we paid $3.50 for these. They sold on Poshmark for $36. This is a Chico's top. Um, this is called the Cotton Slub Floral Top. It has side vents on it. I only picked this one up because I saw that this exact one had sold uh, previously. I paid $4.29. It sold on Poshmark for $24. 
This is a really great find. This is Free People. We've surprisingly been finding a lot of Free People sweaters and blazers, which I am not upset with. Uh, Nikki actually found this one. This was called the Montana Cable Knit Cardigan, and the color was aged pine green. You can see this was an extra small, but Free People stuff tends to be pretty oversized, so I don't mind picking up extra small in this brand. It still performs well for us. So this one did end up being a pretty special piece. We paid $4.89 for it, and it sold for $90, and it sold pretty quickly as well. I would recommend if you have Free People and you think it might be a special piece to definitely look up the style number on these tags here and make sure that you don't have a rare piece because if you're just pricing this, if you're like, okay, on average, most Free People cardigans go for 30 to 35. If I would have done that and not looked up the style, I would have missed out on about $60. So just keep that in mind if you've got Free People. Next up is a pretty good brand to pick up in leggings. I hardly ever find this brand, but I did want to show you. It's it's hard to tell what this is because it doesn't actually spell it out, but this is the logo. It almost looks to me like a shield, but this is Born Primitive, which is a great brand to look for in activewear. These are like jogger style leggings. We paid $4.99 for these. They sold very quickly for $31 on Poshmark. This is a great men's brand to pick up. We sell a lot of this. Some stuff goes for 25, some stuff um, goes for more like this one did. This is a more substantial piece, a full zip sweatshirt, again, size large. I pick up Travis Matthew and almost anything. So this one we paid $4.89 for, it sold for $42. On Poshmark, we sell a lot of Madewell jeans. It definitely does better here than it does on eBay. One thing I will say, and I say it in every video, is if you're going to pick up Madewell jeans, you're probably going to sit on them for a while, but they do end up selling, and in my opinion, sell for a pretty decent profit. So these ones are a pair of Cali denim boot jeans, size 27, and I paid $2.99 for these. They sold for $31. Next pair of Madewell jeans, these are called the Classic Straight Jeans. I picked these up for $6.99, they sold for $32. One thing I will say about Madewell is if you've got anything wide leg denim in that, those tend to perform better. This next one is an Under Armour vest. I don't pick up a lot of Under Armour, but more substantial pieces like a puffer vest I'm definitely looking into. This was a Cold Gear Women's Infrared uh, puffer vest and this just particular line seemed to do pretty good. So I picked this up for $6.50. It sold for $34 on Poshmark, which I thought was pretty good. Here's cashmere coming through again. This is Armani Collezioni 100% cashmere. I don't pick up this brand a lot. I actually don't come across it a lot, um, but when I do, I, I tend to look it up. It retails for a lot, but the sell-through rate is not always there, so I usually leave this behind, but the cashmere definitely pulled this one through, so we got it. I paid $4.69 for this. It sold for $40 on Poshmark. Here's another LLB item, and this is also um, a plus size. So this is a 1X, just pretty minimal piece, but a pullover shawl uh, top. And we paid three for this. It sold for 25. Got good feedback on that. You guys might have seen this one in a haul. This is Ed Hardy. Anything Ed Hardy right now is doing really good because it's part of that like 90s Y2K trend. These are not easy to miss. So keep your eye out for Ed Hardy stuff. Some of the men's stuff does a lot better, but for a woman's t-shirt, I thought this was a pretty good sale. I picked this up at a VOA for $4.99 and it sold for $32. Okay, this next one, I don't know if you guys remember those Cry Precision jeans from, I don't know if it was the last one or the one before that, but we've been keeping our eye out for tactical gear and this is a new brand to me. This is triple aught design, and this is a definite bolo. Absolutely a bolo. Keep your eye out for this. The reason we looked at these was because we've been having good luck with tactical gear, and I don't know if you can tell, probably not, but they have this ripstop material. You see this kind of texture on an item that is ripstop, which is a good indicator that you've got a good item. So these are a pair of ripstop pants. 
I don't remember what we originally listed them for. I want to say like 125 or 150. We paid only 4.89 for them. They sold for a hundred dollars. I thought that was a really great sale. Here is another scarf bins pickup. This one is by Eddie Bauer. It was an Aztec kind of design and it had a like faux Sherpa lining. And so for those reasons, we got it. I will say this is probably an anomaly because we cross posted this from eBay over to Poshmark. I think we had it listed for 25, but when we bring items over to Poshmark, we add a few dollars, about $5 in this case to account for offers. And someone just went ahead and priced it out or bought it outright. Um, because they'd had that scarf before. So I was really happy with that sale. Again, we got it at the bin, so probably paid less than a dollar, and it sold for my full asking price on Poshmark of 30. This is an Urban Outfitters piece. I don't normally pick up Urban Outfitters, but I thought this was a really nice belt. This was 100% cow leather and it had that like bohemian western kind of look to it and was in pretty good condition i paid 2.99 it sold for 20 this was a trust your gut feeling this is the brand pinfield i don't know much about this brand all i can say is i felt this it felt very high quality i did some comps and some of them were going for a lot so i decided to chance it i paid 5.99 for this this one did sit because i had it priced pretty high but it ended up selling on an offer for 40 dollars would keep your eye out for this, but I would expect to price it a little bit lower than everyone else to get it moving. Here's another example of those like vintage looking maxi dresses. This is Ralph Lauren. This was a vintage size eight long sleeve denim dress. I paid $8.99 for this and it sold for $40. I paid up because I was pretty confident we sold a lot of these before. Here's another dress. There's a lot of dresses selling on this one, surprisingly, because it's colder weather, but I don't know if you've noticed, almost all of them are long sleeve. This is a great brand to look for in dresses. It is Title IX. Honestly, a good brand to look for in general. Um, it is like a tennis kind of athletic wear brand. So Title IX, size large, print, long sleeve dress. I paid $4.89. It sold for $45. And then we sold another one to the same person, kind of along those same lines, size extra large. This one's a like turtleneck. We paid $4.89 for this and it sold for $40. This one I got off a of thread up and honestly I need to go back on my thread up um my thread up like order details to figure out how much I paid for this because apparently got deleted out of my SKU. But I want to say I paid about like $18, $20 for this. And I did think I was going to sell for a lot more, but 20 into $69, in my opinion, still a really good pickup. So I found this on thread up for a discount and decided to get it. This is Denim and Supply by Ralph Lauren. Anything in this brand that has nice Aztec details or Southwestern print, I would definitely look up. This one sat for a while, I think because it was a size extra small. Had it been a little bit larger, it definitely, definitely would would sell faster. But again, I think I paid about 20 and it sold for 69. Not bad, but when I pay that much for an item, I do want it to flip quicker. This is Laguna Beach. Now, if you look up this brand, it does not have a huge sell through rate. It really depends on the piece. But what I've noticed is that this thick stitching, the contrast stitching, if you've got something that is pretty contrasted, it's definitely a good pickup in this brand, Laguna Beach. Um, and in general, I would look for thick stitching on men's jeans. We paid $6.99 for these and they sold for $56. This one is the last item I'm going to show you today. This is Brooks Brothers. This is a pretty solid seller for me in the men's department. This was a size extra large, 100% merino wool zip pullover. We paid $4.89 and it sold for $35. That's pretty typical of this brand. Again, I can rely on this one pretty heavily. All right, guys, so that's it for what sold last week. I hope that you guys enjoyed watching. Again, if you would like to, subscribe down below. I'd love to have you guys on the channel consistently. Drop a comment down below. Let me know if you are new. But as always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.